What's going on guys, I'm Ben Snow and welcome to another guide to Harry Potter Magic Awakened where I'm gonna give you 10 awesome tips and tricks that hopefully will help you get better at dueling. We'll start with your deck. There's a lot of great powerful cards out there that can deal a lot of damage, but you don't want to have too many of those in your deck because they consume a lot of magic points. So it's always good to keep balance, but also you need to have the ability to defend yourself and fight back. So here I have a set of eight cards, two cards of two magic points consumption, two of three MP consumption, three of four and one of seven. I don't have too many defensive cards on this server, but it's good to have about three defensive cards, two offensive, two controlling ones, and one mega offensive. For the mega here, I use the Umbridge Fireworks. I forgot the real name because it takes a lot of time and magic points to cast, but it deals a ton of damage. But this way, by having a lot of low MP cost cards, I will also be able to cycle through them very quickly, which brings us to the next point, card cycling. So. You start with four cards each duel, eight in total. After you spend a card, it goes to the end of the line, meaning that after you use a card, four more cards need to be spent for you to see that first one again. That's why low MP cost cards are so important. If you have a deck with say four MP cards only, you'll need to spend 16 points before having that old card appearing again. Meanwhile, it's only 10 points for your low cost cards. And also, don't fall into trap of thinking that I'll just line up powerful and non-powerful cards in a strategic order, because the order you put your cards in here doesn't matter. It's all random with each duel, which is not the case for companions. They have to be organized in the order of need. At the start of the duel, everyone has their movement cards and health bars full, so it's a better idea to use an offensive companion to start things out. They will direct your opponent's minions to them and deal massive damage if you protect them right. Then it's a good idea to use a healing companion. Usually if your opponent wants to get rid of them, they'll lose magic points trying to stop the heal while you generate some for you and regenerate health. For the last one, it's a good idea to have a tank companion uh, and there are all a lot of options out there, so take your pick. Which brings us to the next point, study your cards. This is Hogwarts after all. I know there's a lot of them and it can become intimidating trying to understand and apply useful cards, but it's always good to take your time, read, watch some tutorials on specific cards and test them out. I guarantee you, you have a few cards in your possession that you don't know full potential of. The general idea behind the positioning is pretty easy. Always try to stay within the highlighted area shown on the screen and stay away from corners because you will not be able to escape the spells with area of effect while standing there. The distance at which you will start casting basic casts is about two checkers and of course certain spells will force you to move one way or the other but by positioning yourself in the center will make your movement less predictable than if you were to be standing in the corner. Quick tip, if you are trying to trap your opponent in the corner and force them to take aerial damage, placing your aerial of effect only just a bit inside that pentagon is enough to cast an unavoidable spell. Again, this is the dead zone, so avoid at all cost. Keep an eye out for your movement, because you never want to run out of movement cards and get frozen in place, leaving you extremely vulnerable to incoming attacks. The movement cards do replenish, but very slowly. To avoid that, make sure you rationalize your movement cards in a sufficient way. Don't just make little baby steps. It's something that I caught myself doing. I was just freaking out, spamming my moves, but I wasn't really moving. So better move far and wide. Also, your movement can and should be weaponized. When you are taking a giant leap towards one side or the other, the enemy will assume your direction and position their next card according to your trajectory. This way, you can make the opponents spend their magic points and then quickly change the direction. There are cards and echoes that can help you with quick movements, but will all come with practice. And you can do that in the practice area, which is kind of hidden away from you, but it's a great way to test out new cards and practice different tactics and combos. To access the practice area, you have to go to your spell book, then click on any of the spell cards. Then you'll end up with this book. 
On the left side of it, click this icon with a wand and it will take you to the practice area where you'll be able to position dummies or, you know, clear them all, give yourself unlimited moves, etc. Once you level up to the bronze level, you will then be able to bring in your friends here too. Timing is very crucial to achieving great results in duels. And usually things get crazy when the timer starts to run out. When the enemies are left with only a few moves, you can force them to walk into your spells. It's similar to how you would be making them spend the card by moving across the arena. Here, for example, you can send a monstrous book of monsters on the left, then prepare to cast Incendio on the right. In case the opponent moves away from the book, they'll step into the ring of fire. Or if they move towards you, they'll be taken damage from your basic attacks while still being occupied with the book. The next tip is extremely, I repeat, extremely crucial to your success in combat, and that is like and subscribe, <laughs> because this helps me out to bring all the tips and tricks to you. And here I want to give a couple of more technical tips that might make your life on the battleground a bit easier. Everyone has their preferred method, but some may not be aware that you can have multiple ways of using cards. You can double tap on the card and it will activate automatically. You can tap on the card, then tap on the desired area of application. You can tap and hold a card, then drag it to your preferred area. And on PC, in addition to similar uses with your mouse, you can also use the numbered keys to quickly select your cards. And that's actually my preferred method when playing on a desktop. Some may not realize this, but you can rotate your battleground. So many times my character just gets lost behind all the visual effects and trolls and it's nice that you can reposition the point of view. It's extremely helpful with the Forbidden Forest missions. It does take your precious seconds from you, but you can always time it so you do it while you are moving. So this feature is unavailable in the dueling matches. Now, there's a lot more to combat than this, so make sure to check out my next video with some more helpful tips and guides. I want to give a huge shout out to Roxy who provided some awesome insight into combat and helped out with this video. And now I want to hear what tricks and tactics you use in Magic Awakened. I appreciate you guys for making all the way to the end of the video. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.